Welcome to part two of Exponent Properties. If you have not watched Exponent Properties part one, please go back and do so to see the first three topics that we cover. We'll continue with raising a monomial to a power. When raising a monomial to a power, we're gonna look at the expansion again. So if we've got three to the fifth, all raised to the second power, that means I'm gonna take this and write it two times. Now it's really expanded out. I'm gonna see how many I have. All together, I have 10. This means I've got two to the second four times. So two twos, one, two, three, four times. Ex condense it all together, I get two to the eighth. X to the second, three times. I get X to the sixth. And finally, five X to the fourth, two times. I get five to the second, X to the eighth. Let's see if we can find a shortcut. When raising a monomial to a power, well, the base doesn't change, so it stays three. And then how did I get from five and two to 10? Well, I multiplied. Let's see here, I'm not gonna change the base two, and I'm gonna multiply two times four, and I get two to the eighth. The base doesn't change x, I multiply two times three, and I get x to the sixth. Now this one's a little trickier. I've got two bases here. It looks like five is a coefficient, but actually I'm going to use it as a base and say its exponent is one. So I'm gonna multiply, and this is the mistake that a lot of people make. We never change the base. So the base is five, we multiply one times two. The base is x, we multiply four times two. And we get five to the second, x to the eighth. Let's do a few more examples x to the third to the sixth power. So the base doesn't change, but I can multiply the exponents and I get x to the 18th. I've got two bases here, and so I'm gonna multiply the exponent by exponents. x three times two, y to the four times two. So it's x to the sixth, y to the eighth. Here, be careful, I have two bases. So do not forget the exponent of one, that's the mistake that is most commonly made. Multiply exponents, you get five to the one times four, x to the four times four. That's five to the fourth, x to the 16th. And you can simplify this further and actually get five to the fourth, and that's 625x to the 16th. Both of these are right. Again, we've got a two, an x, and a y. So don't forget to put that exponent of a one. Oh, don't forget to put an exponent of a one on that y. So it's gonna be two, one times three, x, two times three, y, one times three. So it's two to the third, x to the sixth, y to the third. Or you can multiply that all out and you get eight, x to the sixth, y to the third. Go ahead and give these a try. Press play when you're ready to see the solutions. See how you did? Be really careful with three and four. We're gonna talk about the zero exponent by looking at some patterns. So if I expand out two to the fifth, I get 32. Two to the fourth, I get 16. Two to the third, eight. Two to the second, four. Two to the first, two. Now two to the zero. So let's take a look. How did we get from 32? How did we get from 32 to 16? We divided by two. We had one last two to multiply by. 16 to eight, we also divided by two. One last two to multiply. Eight to four, divide by two. Four to two, divide by two. So if we continue that pattern, what is two divided by two? That's one. Two to the zero power is one. Let's see if it works for a different base of three. Three to the fifth power is 243. How do we get from 243 to 81? Well, we have multiplied by one last three, we divide by three. 81, now we're dividing by three. Divide by three again, nine divided by three. And then again, three divided by three is one. Three to the zero power is one. So we can say that the zero exponent, anything to the zero power is one. The common mistake is to say anything to the zero power is zero, but we just proved that that is not the case. So if we're gonna simplify these expressions, x to the zero power, well, anything to the zero power is one. 
Well, we've got x to the 0 power, we know that's 1, times y to the 4th. So we could say 1y to the 4th, or just y to the 4th. 5 to the 0 power, we know that that's 1. 2y to the 0 power, well, y to the 0 power is just 1, so the answer would just be 2. Give these a try. Press play when you're ready to see the solution. See how you did. Finally, we're going to talk about negative exponents, and we'll start by looking at patterns again. We saw something similar to this when we were exploring the zero exponent. So let's see if we can use a pattern again to help us. So if here we're dividing by 2, we're dividing by 2, we're dividing by 2. So let's look at this. We have one last 2 here. So this is really 1 divided by 2 instead of multiplied. Well, let's write that as a fraction that's 1 over 2. And then we keep going, we keep dividing by 2. So if we've got 2 to the negative power, negative 1 is 1 over 2, well, this would also be divided by 2. So it would be 1 divided by 2 to the second, 2 times 2. So that's 1 divided by 4. 2 to the second, 1 divided by 2 times 2. Keep going, that's 1 divided by, that would be 2 3 times, so that's 1 over 8. So let's take a look at this for a second. How do we get from 2 to the first to 1 over 2? Well, that's 1 over 2 to the first. So we took this base, we moved it to the denominator, and we changed the exponent. Let's see if that works here. 2 to the negative 2. So I'm going to take that base and move it to the bottom, and then change my exponent to positive. Now we've talked about it before, we can't actually keep a floating denominator, so we have to put a 1 there, and then 2 to the second power, that's 1 to the 4th. Let's see about this. 2 to the negative 3, let's move the base to the bottom, change the exponent to positive, can't have a floating denominator, well that's the same as 1 over 8. Let's see if we can do it with another base. So looking at this, let's take some ideas. So if we say 3 to the first is 3, so 3 to the negative first is going to be 1 over 3 to the first, or 1 over 3. 3 to the negative 2 has to do with this one. So 3 to the negative 2 means we're going to take this base and put it in the bottom and change the exponent to positive, or 1 over 9. So it's moving the base. When the exponent is negative, we're moving the base to the bottom, 1 over 3, and then changing the exponent to positive. Again, we're going to move the base from the numerator to the denominator and change the negative exponent to positive. Now, if you have a coefficient out front, leave that alone. Remember, that's got an exponent of positive 1, so you're not going to move that. Now, what happens if the negative exponent is in the denominator? We're going to move the base from the denominator to the numerator and change the negative exponent to positive. If you have a coefficient, that doesn't get to move because it doesn't have a negative exponent. Let's do a few examples. So we've got x to the negative 3 power. So we've got a base of x, and we need to move it to the bottom, and then we can change the exponent to positive. Now you can't have a floating denominator, so we put a 1, and that's our final answer. Now we've got a negative exponent in the bottom, so we're going to move the base to the top, and change the exponent to positive. So we have 1 on the top already. We're going to move the y and change it to a positive. Now you can put a 1 on the bottom, but you don't have to. This could just be y squared. Let's see, we've got two bases here. The only one with a negative exponent is the 2. So this whole term is moving to the bottom. The x to the fifth is going to stay in the top. The base of 2 is going to the bottom. And when we move the base, we get to change the exponent to a positive. We've got only a negative exponent here, so this term is the only term that's moving. 
So the 2y is staying, the x is moving when it moves, the exponent turns positive, and 3. The only thing I'm going to do is we usually write our final answers in alphabetical order, so I'm just going to switch that around. You give these a try. Be patient. This can be a difficult topic. Press play when you're ready to see the solutions. And the last thing we're going to do is just mix up all the rules. I'm going to do some examples. You'll do a few more difficult examples, and that will conclude this PowerPoint. So let's take a look at all the rules. So first I'm going to just look at bases. So I've got a to the zero power, and then I've got these b's that are being multiplied. Well, I know that a to the zero power is one. And I know that when I multiply with the same base, I can add the exponents. So I get one times b to the ninth, or just b to the ninth power. When I take a look at number two, there's nothing to do with that a to the second. Now I can do a few things with these b's. I can either use my division rule or use my negative exponent rule. I'll go ahead and use my negative exponent rule, which means I'm going to move this base of b to the bottom. When I move it to the bottom, the a squared stays on top, the b squared stays on bottom, the b moves to the bottom, and the exponent turns positive. Well, now I've got these b's being multiplied, so I've got a squared over b to the sixth power. There is another way to do this problem where you do the division rule first. Let's take a look at 3 here. I'm going to apply the power property first, which means I'm going to multiply each of these exponents by 3. There's definitely another way to do this. You could deal with that negative exponent and that positive and that zero exponent first. So I've got a to the negative 9 and b to the 0. Now, a to the negative 9, that needs to move to the bottom, and this is actually equal to 1. So I've got a 1 on top and a to the positive 9 on the bottom. Finally, I'm going to look here. I've got a lot going on. I've got some coefficients that can be simplified. I've got x terms, and I've got y terms. So let's start with the coefficients. 2 over 4 can simplify to 1 over 2. Now, the x terms I'm going to deal with a little differently, so you can see another way. I have a bigger exponent of 3. Bigger, 3 is bigger than negative 4, so I'm going to use my division rule, which says keep the bigger exponent wherever it is, and then subtract the other one. Just be super careful, we got a lot of negatives. I'm going to do the same thing with the y's. I've got a bigger exponent in the top, and then I subtract. So on the top, I've got 1x to the 7th, y to the 3rd, over 2. Or just x to the 7th, y to the 3rd, over 2. Go ahead and give the next slide a try. Press play when you're ready to see the solutions. And that concludes these slides on exponent properties.